Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm at CES in Las Vegas and I'm joined by Dr. Franco Dupree from LifeQ. Interesting company, very much focused on the data. One of the things I've been noticing here at CES is everybody's sensing data, everybody's grabbing all this data. I'm not quite sure they all know what to do with it. So tell me a bit about your model and what you're actually doing here and the background of the people that founded the company. So in short, uh, our company is, revolves around the cloud analytics platform for wearable data. Uh, what, if you look at the current companies that you just mentioned that claim to analyze wearable data to make inferences of parameters that cannot be measured directly, I think the best way to describe the competing technologies are either statistical methods or art artificial intelligence methods that one puts in between wearable metrics that we can collect from 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 users and things that we would like to infer. Now, the problem with that approach is it's ignoring all the knowledge that we have of human physiology. So what is unique to the angle of our specific company and where the background of the founders of the company features is a field called computational systems biology. So in this field, I've been working with me mechanistic models of human cardiorespiratory physiology and we use these models alongside the input from wearables with a thin probabilistic inference layer to basically infer the most likely physiological states that a user would have experienced to generate the pattern of data that we receive from wearable devices. Okay. Now, one problem that we've experienced with the wearable devices out there in the current ecosystem is that they're not all that accurate. So, if we put low quality data into our cloud analytics platform, it reflects badly on its inference capacity. So, we were kind of forced to design our own wearable that does accurate motion compensated optical heart rate monitoring, heart rate variability monitoring and also oxygen saturation monitoring and we, are, we, we have the, our own guarantee that this will uh, give us high level inference on the cloud platform. Okay. Now what we've done also is to miniaturize this technology into a module format that is roughly 4 by 8 millimeters large and can be easily incorporated into the wearable devices from other partners and we do not foresee ourselves ever putting something on the consumer shelf carrying our brand. We would like to put market this under existing consumer brands and right. simply a, a, a allow them to have technology that is accurate and compatible with our platform. What we look forward to in the future is in terms of other wearables popping up that will inevitably, inevitably measure all of the vital signs that you can think about, heart rate, breathing rate, you know, oxygen saturation, the skin temperature, blood pressure, these things will pop up in a few years to come. And what, what we foresee is that we will be in a position to most accurately infer underlying physiological states on, from the input of these wearables together with our cloud analytics platform. So what we've gone and done is already to start some pilot experiments where we say, given the metrics that we have on this device, plus an additional metric, let's say, a breathing rate and a tidal volume from a smart fabric manufacturer, uh -huh. what would we be, be able to predict? And in you know, our press releases you would see, we talk about things like being able to calculate the user's real-time macronutrient usage. So in these cases we can actually distinguish whether the user is burning fats, carbohydrates or proteins. Right. Um, we imagine many more applications. So if you think about our commercial model, we have the module where we collect the data that's a hardware interaction yeah. with the wearable industry but then also on app development industries where we can provide this additional information to uh, those kinds of companies in addition to let's say verticals like the medical uh, sector, frail care, um, athletic performance, we can also have interactions where we sell data and inference. Okay, okay. So that makes sense. So you've developed the product, you have your, inter your own internal electronic development or you partnered with someone else to do that? Yes, so we basically have partners that provide us with the necessary chips to put together the module. But the, the layout of the module is something that we have designed internally. We are not a hardware company that will manufacture anything physically ourselves, but we will license the designs and algorithms on this module. Okay, so that'll, that'll be licensed to an outsourcer. So in terms of where you are in the stage of the business, this is really the, the launch, so really exciting times. What kind of partners are you looking for? You're looking for partners that are, are already branded in the, um, in the wearables or the apparel market that have got technology, or people that have got kind of um, 
you know, maybe people that are in the medical sector that are more yeah. solutions focused. I mean, tr truth be told, we are looking uh, to, to, to work together with the complete space. I mean, where, where we will need intermediaries, we will also include them, but we want to roll out this technology in as many verticals as possible, leveraging partnerships wherever possible. Yeah. 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 So for you, it's all about that huge architecture, that big data processing uh, and making sure sticking to our strengths sticking yeah. to the computational systems yeah. biology making that, yeah. Making sure yeah. That's yeah. Okay. wonderful well exciting times ahead we'll uh, we'll keep in touch and see what goes on and thank you very much for your time thank, thank you, thank you.